Hey kids, welcome to Unit 2, Lesson 8, Mutator Methods, Exercise Number 3. Let's see what we have to do today. We have to import our dessert.java from the backpack. Then within our dessert.java subclass, we are going to write mutator methods to modify the value stored in flavor and mutator methods to modify the value stored in the price instance variables. Consider a value that might be invalid. For example, can a price be negative? Looking at our code, we are instantiating a new object. It is of the dessert subclass that we haven't imported yet. It's called my dessert. It takes two parameters, coconut and $1.75. Looks like we're printing off the get flavor, get price method from whatever stored in the my dessert object. Looks like next lesson, we're gonna write the mutator methods for my dessert to change the flavor and price. Then it looks like it gets the new flavor and price and prints it off. Then we have a new object of the customer class. It's called my customer. It takes one parameter my desserts so we're passing along an object hmm and then in five we're going to instantiate an object and test the modified dessert or enter orders method then it looks like we're printing off from my dessert object get flavor get price Ooh, that's a lot to do, kids, but that's all right. We're going to use decomposition, break this down little by little, and by the end of this lesson, this will seem like a piece of cake. <laughs> well, let's get started. Go to our backpack. I know I've kept my dessert subclass up, so I'm just going to import that. Let's look at our dessert subclass here. We have our import scanner class. We have two private instance variables, flavor and price. Our no argument, that setting flavor to plain, price to zero. Then we can take two parameters, and that's going to be new flavor, new price, which is just set to the flavor and price from above. Then we wrote our get methods from lesson seven. And whenever we call the get flavor, we're just gonna return flavor. If we call get price, we're just gonna return whatever the price is. And we have our end of class. What we have to do now is write these mutator methods to modify the value stored in flavor and price. And how do we do that? Let's give ourselves a little room here. Go over, tab. And let's look at this anatomy of the mutator method. As you can see, the first thing we're going to do is we want to give it public access outside of the class. This time we're changing something. We don't want to return anything. Get methods, return, set methods, or void. Then we need whatever our method name is and any arguments that might be passed along. We have our curly cues. We are setting our variable to whatever the argument is being passed along. If we are trying to change the price, our argument might be new price, but we're setting the original instance variable price to the new value. With that knowledge in hand, again, we want public access, void, because we want to change something, not return something. And these mutator methods or set methods usually have set before whatever variable name we're trying to change. We're trying to do flavor. So we're going to use the set flavor is our method name. What are we trying to change? Well, we're trying to change flavor. Flavor is a string. So the parameter being passed along is going to be a string. And it is going to be called new flavor. Don't forget your curly cues. Why new flavor? Well, new flavor 
is the variable that we created for our parameterized constructor. So we're using that and any time we want to change the flavor and we enter new values, that just means flavor is now going to be equal to new flavor that was just created from above. So anytime anybody calls the set flavor method, they have to enter a string. That string is going to be a new flavor. And whatever that value is, well, that becomes what flavor is. That easy. Let's do one for price now. Again, public access, void, because we don't want to return anything. We are changing the price, so it's set price. What parameter does it take? Well, price is a double, so double, and then new price is the parameter. Don't forget your curly cues. For this one, if we call the set price method and we enter a new value, that new value is going to be equal to price. But consider the negative value again. We don't want to sell something for negative. We wouldn't be in business very long if we were selling stuff for negative price. How would we fix that? Well, looking back at the last lesson, we did something very similar. We just used an if statement. Let's say if new price is greater than or equal to, because maybe we want to give it away for free. We're not heartless kids. So as long as it's greater than or equal to zero, then we will set the new price. That means if a negative number is entered, it won't change. It has to be a number greater than zero. Let's hit run, make sure we don't have any spelling errors. Program ran good, so it doesn't look like anything we did is wrong yet. Key takeaway is the anatomy of a mutator or a set method. First, it's public because we want access outside of the class. Void because we don't want to return the price. We just want to change it. In naming conventions in Java, we usually use the word set before the private instance variable name we want to change. We're trying to update the price instance variable. That means our method name is set price. Then the value we want to change for price, it's a double. So we did double new price. And then we're just going to set whatever the new parameter that was passed equal to that private instance variable. And that means that private instance variable now has a new value. And that's how we change or update our information within an object. In the next couple of lessons, we're gonna build upon this concept, but I think that's it for this exercise. Hopefully this video helped you understand the anatomy of a mutator or set method. As always, kids, if you have any questions, come see me. Otherwise, I'll see you on the next video. See you later, kids. Bye, bye, bye.